Hi and welcome back to Terry Talks Movies and yes I did shave and yes I don't like it and yes I am growing it back as soon as humanly possible. So about two weeks ago when I had facial hair uh, I decided I was going to go and do a little bit of a thrift store haul and see what I can find but all the places around here have movies I don't really like. So Sally went over to visit her parents on the other side of town and I decided to go for a drive up in the beautiful wonderful hills known as the Dandenongs. There, it's a kind of a weird area. It got hit really hard by some bushfires in 2009, but since then they've been bouncing back and the area is kind of wealthy. It's a combination of wealthy Anglo-Saxon people with hippies. And I thought that might be a good place to go looking for thrift store, we call them op shops here, opportunity shops and just see what they've got. And I came out with a pretty good haul. I spent about 30 bucks all up. I'm really gonna to have to go further afield again because I really liked what I found. I've seen most of the movies so I can talk about them a little bit. So let's get started. I got a double pack of two movies based on a Marvel intellectual property. Now they're not your mainstream Marvel ones. They're back from a decade or so ago. But I kind of like them. I don't think they're as good as the most recent iteration of the character. But nonetheless, I got them for two bucks for a two disc set. So it is The Punisher and Punisher Warzone. One's got Ray Stevenson in it. The other one's got Thomas Jane. And uh, yeah, they're not too bad. They're, they're not as good as they should be. And they're stuck together with stickers, so I've got to pull them apart. But they're in good shape. And I got them for two dollars. So, you know, the two Punisher movies. I like anything with an full intellectual property, unashamedly. Some I like more than others. Um, the Roger Corman Fantastic Four I can take or leave. And pretty much every iteration of Fantastic Four. Since then, I have great hopes for the future one. The Punisher collection, $2. Who put it out? Um, Sony put it out. So like it's, so it's a big brand, big brand one. I'm not sure if that's the original case because I'm not sure yellow is a color that we recognize with the Punisher though. It is a double set, so it might well be the original case, who knows? But I'm gonna rewatch those because I like a good meathead action film. I kind of like both actors playing Punisher, but not as much as I like John Bernthal playing it in the Netflix series. Well, there were several Netflix series that he played the character of Frank Castle, AKA the Punisher. I think John Bernthal did a really great nuanced version of it. The scripts were better and they had more time to develop the character. This one I got because it's a next rental copy and I got nostalgic when I saw it because of the all the ex rental stickers that are on it. It's actually a movie directed by Jonathan Frakes who was in Star Trek The Next Generation. And it's a kind of young adult, back to the future time traveling thing that we've kind of forgot. Maybe it's worth a rego. It was actually from Monbulk Video Store. I got it up in this um, little town called Monbulk up in the mountains. So it's actually from their local video store. And it's a thing called Clock Stoppers. Now let me know what you think of this one. I haven't watched it since I was renting it. And as you can see, there are more rental stickers up there as well. It's um, yeah, a little time travel, young adult -y thing. Pretty harmless, but I may put together... Uh, video of a bunch of those kind of things that we've now forgotten which are at least entertaining i kind of like that idea of doing that and uh clock stoppers yeah i'll give it a go and i think i got that one for a dollar or so it's a little hard to tell with some of the pricing because if i buy three or four things there the little old ladies who run the thrift stores tend to just give me a, a final figure and with some of these i just don't know how much i paid for them now, this one, everybody's got a copy of, but I wanted a, a different copy than the one I had, which was getting a bit manky. This one's actually a DC intellectual property, oddly enough, but I want to see what's on it because it's a little vague. The back cover gives a history of Superman. There's the, what it says, the biggest Superman ever. So, biggest ever DVD Superman, it says. So obviously it's got the Fleischer cartoons from the 1940s which dropped into the public domain i'm not sure if they're still in the public domain but they were for a time and they're a good rewatch there's um some rotoscope figures it really is animation that i prefer in a 1940s context to things like disney animation i think that these ones are a passion project 
and because it's talking about a whole bunch of other stuff there may be more than just the Max Fleischer Superman stuff on this and I'm waiting to find out it's a no-name brand it's um, an Australian pressing it says two hours of super fun down there see so I don't know whether all of the there were 17 of them it may well be just the Fleischer Superman ones but they're rewatchable they're all on YouTube anyway but I don't mind having them on uh, physical media as well that kind of that beautiful diesel punkness of the Fleischer Superman is something that I like revisiting now and then so I might just pop this disc in when I'm feeling it and just uh, enjoy it see biggest ever DVD Superman it says so on the edge too So we've got that. Now this one is an Australian film that I haven't watched yet, but I've, it's been recommended to me by my Australian film fan friends and reviewers. It was directed by Nash Edgerton, the stars his brother Joel. It's an Australian crime drama, a bit like Animal Kingdom in, in that kind of genre, but I haven't watched it yet and I really want to. There, there are things in Australian cinema that I've missed and I want to catch up on. And this one, again, I probably got it for a dollar or two. They were incredibly cheap, these movies. And this is a double disc set by the look of things as well with a ton of bonus things uh, it's got deleted scenes pre-visualization special effects music video a short film a popcorn taxi q a and production stills and it's called the square now i know this is solid stuff and i haven't seen it but i'm going to watch it it's going near the top of the list this one was four dollars so i actually paid four dollars for it. it's got a sticker on the back says four dollars but I want to check that one out and maybe I'll put it into a review. I'm happy to get that because I've seen it for sale elsewhere for much, much more. It's in good shape. Australian crime movies really do have a grittiness that I appreciate. They're, they're not as soft as some other ones and they're not as kind of gun crazy as others. They're more about the drama and the characters with violence intermixed. But The Square is going near the top of my list. So while we're on the subject of crime, I picked this one up too. This one doesn't have a price on it, so it was probably one of the ones I picked up for a dollar or maybe two dollars. I've seen the talent of Mr. Ripley, but I haven't seen Ripley's Game yet, with John Malkovich playing the character of Tom Ripley. Based on the Patricia Highsmith books, uh, I'm looking forward to this one because it looks like it's got a little bit of a European sensibility about it based on the pictures. I haven't seen it yet, but I really want to see it. And uh, that kind of sociopathic, psychopathic, Tom Ripley character that Highsmith created is great. The actually, in fact, the first DVD I ever bought was The Talented Mr. Ripley, which is up there somewhere, or maybe down a little lower there. But uh, this one, it says, John Malkovich was born to play Ripley, according to David Stratton, who is a very well-regarded and really not, um, lovely Australian film critic. So looking forward to that. It says widescreen, so it's probably an older DVD. 1.85 to 1. Uh, let me see who directed it. Liliana Cavani. So it's a female director as well. And I want to watch more movies by female directors. So Ripley's Game. Definitely going to check that one out. And at the price, you can't really knock it. Now, I'm a sucker sometimes for getting packs of movies with a whole bunch of movies jammed on a whole bunch of discs. And this one says 10 movie super pack. Starring Charles Lawton, Orson Welles, Johnny Weissmuller. And it's one of those 10 movie pack. Now what we've got is Tarzan and the Trappers with Gordon Scott, who was a 1950s Tarzan. Mutiny starring Angela Lansbury from 1952. I know nothing about that. A movie called Captain Scarlet starring Richard Green from 1953, which has got nothing to do with the super marionation Captain Scarlet. Hercules Against the Moon Men from 1964, so you got a bit of peplum in there. Devil of the Desert Against the Sons of Hercules with Kirk Morris from 1964. Captain Kid with Charles Lawton from 1945, and you never lose when you see a Charles Lawton movie. Blonde Savage from 1947 starring Gail Sherwood. Swamp Fire starring Johnny Wiesmuller from 1946. David and Goliath starring Orson Welles from 1960. And another peplum, Hercules and the Torrents of Babylon, starring Peter Lupus from 1964. Peter Lupus was in the original series of Mission Impossible. So those ones are, are kind of okay. Let's, uh, Randolph Scott's in Captain Kid with Charles Lawton. So that's pretty bloody impressive. 
Ah, uh, yeah, those ones I'm going to check out because they're all definite B pictures. And this one, again, I got for $2, so it's, you know, the money's there. A Steve McQueen movie. Picked up a Steve McQueen movie for a buck, which I'm not unhappy with. It's one I've been looking for a bit, even though Steve McQueen is too old to play the character as in the movie. But it's a sequel to this little one. It's actually a prequel to a movie that Imprint put out a couple of years ago. The Carpetbaggers. And Alan Ladd's character in The Carpetbaggers is the same character that Steve McQueen plays in Nevada Smith, which is a prequel to The Carpetbaggers using his character. Uh, it says, Nevada Smith is a rugged, innocent boy born into the 1890s during California's gold rush days to a Native American mother and a white father. So basically he's playing uh, Nevada Smith from young man into adulthood. Steve McQueen was always rough around the edges and uh, even in the blob he didn't play a, a really convincing teenager and this is well after that but any Steve McQueen movie is a lot of fun and I may well watch it back to back with the carpet baggers and wonder to myself how Nevada Smith ended up being about a foot and a half shorter when he got older. But uh, yeah, it's um, a little bit of a kind of late Western and a, and a character piece. And I'm going to draw a uh, medium level of violence. So you know, the, the violence is there as you need it. And it's a really odd combination of things, uh, putting those two together and making a prequel using the same character. It really does make you wonder what the studios were thinking when they did it. They probably thought, We've got Steve McQueen, let's make a movie. What can we use as a source material? Now, this one is an Australian film that I recommend to everybody. It's one of the great Australian films that nobody talks about. It's from around 2000. A little film called Lantana, which was directed by um, Ray Lawrence and stars Anthony Parley is in there. Uh, let's see who else. Barbara Hershey, Jeffrey Rush, Kerry Armstrong, Rachel Blake. Really good ensemble piece about it. The mysterious disappearance of a woman from her home and the police investigation about it but it's more about the characters and it's a really solid little piece of cinema it's not australian beyond the fact that the characters are very much australian and they act the way australians do rather than pretending to be someone else but if you haven't seen lantana this is a strong recommend from me it really is a superb piece of cinema that you need to check out. I've already got a copy of it, but it's not as good as this one. So I may well uh, gift my other copy of Lantana to somebody. I love the characters in this. They're, they're just so nuanced and they're, they're so different. And there are a couple of scenes where you go, wow, not because they're spectacular and over the top, but because the character beats take you in a direction you weren't expecting. And I really love that in cinema. If you haven't seen it, you should. This is actually either a Chinese or a Taiwanese copy of a Fred Astaire movie I didn't have. Holiday Inn, which has also got Bing Crosby in it, but he was an asshole, so I'm going to ignore him. But it's got um, Virginia Dale's The Love Interest. Is that Taiwanese or Chinese? I'll have to look it up later. But, you know, just a light little Fred Astaire movie with a bit of singing by the other guy. And it wasn't in the collection. And I'm going to enjoy that when I'm in the mood for that kind of thing. Now, this one's actually a TV collection of TV um, movies with a character that started out on radio and ended up, uh, you know, started out as novels by a guy called Francis Durbridge and ended up on radio and then ended up on TV as a series of TV movies by the BBC. Now, I don't know much about it apart from that. But it stars, um, stars Francis Matthews and George Baker. There's a whole bunch of other people in there. George Sewell's in there. It's called the Paul Temple Collection Volume 1. I got this for like a dollar. Mad Men Entertainment put it out here in Australia. It's in 4.3 and it's probably from the 1970s. But it's the kind of weird stuff that you find in these little out-of-the-way thrift stores. And I'll probably watch that. I don't mind that kind of stuff now and then. But I don't want to watch it all the time. And uh, I've got to tell you about the thrift store I bought it. It's attached to a little church. And there's also a free childcare centre. So I thought the money's going to the childcare centre, not the church. And that turns out to be the fact. 
and so I went in there and bought a stack of these things and, and a little bit of music on CD as well and the lady says two dollars for this like stack this thick of things I'm not sure which ones they are but I got them including this which is like tons and tons of episodes and they were cash only so I went to the car and dug into the center console of the car and came out with three dollars so I gave her all of the three dollars and she tried to give me a dollar back but no, I mean, they're helping the community. They've got a free childcare centre there. I'm going to help them out wherever I can. Uh, if I had I had better, bigger folding money, I would have given them five or ten bucks. But uh, it's really odd the little places you find and the things you find in them. And it was a really cramped little area with you know, like shelves and maybe this much space between the shelves, that kind of place. And uh, I like it. And they always smell of mothballs for some reason. But I don't mind that. It's on DVD. It doesn't look like it's been used much, and I will watch that. Now, I've been looking for this movie. I know it's out on Blu-ray, but I don't necessarily know whether I need the Blu-ray and need all the ins and outs of the details. Though this does have deleted scenes and special effects, bloopers behind the scenes, animated menus, production notes, and cast and crew biographies. It's a movie from around the turn of the century that I like. It's technically a kid's film, but I don't care. Small Soldiers, directed by Joe Dante, in some ways, I love this more than I love Gremlins, and I know that that's heresy to say that. But I like it a lot. Uh, it's got Kirsten Dunst in it, uh, Jay Moore's in it, Phil Hartman's in it, Kevin Dunn. The supporting cast is great. David Cross is in it. A whole bunch of other people. It's about um, a bunch of toy, ro toy action figures that end up with military AI chips in them. Now, there's two sides. There's the Gorgonites, who are the monstery ones in the background there. And in fact, I've got the Archer figure as a figure without all the bits and pieces, but I, I picked up the Archer figure. And they're going up against the military grunts of the Commando Elite. And they're all voiced by different people. The Gorgonites are voiced by Frank Langella and also all the guys from Spinal Tap. And the Commando Elite are mostly people who are in the Dirty Dozen, with Tommy Lee Jones as the leader, Chip Hazard. Um, it's it's just a fun little film. Special effects are pretty good. They hold up pretty well. And I really like it. Uh, I could watch Small Soldiers every year for, for from now on and still enjoy it. And the interesting thing, too, is I found a second copy in a different um, op shop. And so I've got two of them. I'm going to give one of them away to somebody. But yeah, um, I, I've been looking for them around the place for a long time and hadn't found them. And then in one day I'll find two copies of it. So not a bad thing. I re-watched it the other day and it holds up well. If you haven't got that one, you should have it in your collection or at least watch it on streaming. I can do it like this. But yeah, Small Soldiers is a recommend from me. I like it a lot. And it's a movie that's got a little bit of a heart to it, even though the asshole corporate wanker who is in charge of everything played by Dennis Leary, gets away with it in the end and just throws money at the problem, which I think is part of the satire, I suppose. But, yeah, it's a nice little film and worth revisiting. Now, this is an odd one. Public domain movies. It's still in the wrapper, and it's got pictures of the stars of the movie from something else about 20 years after these movies were made, which I really think is weird marketing. Who made this? Who put this out? Doesn't say, but I got it for $4. Um, the first one is a shot-for-shot, -shot, script-perfect remake of a film I like a lot, Samuel Fuller's Pick Up on South Street. But it's set in South Africa. And instead of Richard Widmark, you get James Brolin. And instead of um, Gene Peters, you get Jacqueline Bissett. It's a thing called Cape Town Affair, which is great for film scholars because you can look at it i think they've got claire trevor instead of thelma ritter in this one let me just double check yep and really weird to have it set in south africa so you've got that now this second one i don't know anything about but it's got a good cast leslie nielsen gary lockwood nancy kwan dick diaz so it was obviously filmed in the philippines um, directed by William Girdler. It's a thing called Project Kill. Now, that picture of Leslie Nielsen is from Naked Gun here in Leslie Nielsen. But Project Kill is from uh, much earlier. It's a political thriller. Leslie Nielsen is a foreign... You know, uh, uh, this, this is, you're going to love this. 
Leslie Nielsen is a former CIA assassin who has defected in order to reveal the truth about the twisted experiments the organization has been undertaking. Gary Lockwood, his former student, has been sent to bring him back dead or alive. So basically it's like every second spy thriller you see these days. But it's got Leslie Nielsen in it and it's filmed in the Philippines. So I'm going to watch those when I feel like it because they are unnecessary films in, in so many ways. And it's sealed. Exchange or refunds are available in this. It's from Kmart. Kmart sold these. Back in the days where our Kmart actually sold physical media, which it doesn't do now. Paid $4 for this, but I think it's pretty much on the money. But uh, to do a remake of Pick Up on South Street, just because you had the script, and there was probably some money locked up in South Africa that the studio couldn't access. So they just threw Sam Fuller's script at the people. So threw a couple of contract actors, in this case, James Brolin and Jacqueline Bissett. I think this is from the 1960s. And decided to remake Pick Up on South Street as a movie set in South Africa. So make of that what you will. That one is just crazy. And Project Kill. And Project Kill, Nancy Kwan, Leslie Nielsen, Gary Lockwood. You're going to at least give that one a go. Wim Girdler did a whole bunch of things. I think he did Day of the Animals as well. It's weird the movies you find when you go shopping around for physical media. And in a weird way, it's kind of like um, rescuing. They're like rescue puppies for me. To find them and go, yes, I want that and I will treasure it and I will watch it. And getting it off the dusty shelves where it was a long... I found some other weird things that I would never buy in, in those thrift stores. Things like whole box sets of sermons by dodgy American televangelists. I saw those there and I, I meant to take some pictures of them, but for some reason they didn't record. And really bad other things. The, the heartening thing, though, is that people are getting rid of a lot of Baz Luhrmann movies. There are a lot of Romeo and Juliet's there. There are a lot of Australia's. Um, it's only, it only heartens me, the fact that Baz Luhrmann is so disposable as a film director and his, his movies are so lowly regarded in his own country that, in case you didn't pick up on it, I really don't like Baz Luhrmann or his movies. But anyway, that's it for this time around. I'm going to be doing some old school monster movies next time around because I'm in a monster kid mood. So I've got a couple of things I just got, which are going to definitely be in all of our wheelhouses. But I'm glad I got these ones. I went out, I got some fresh air in the mountains. I picked up a couple of nice snacks up there. I actually found a decent coffee in the mountains, which is a very difficult task. But I did manage it, and I'm quite pleased by that because I am a coffee snob. But uh, yeah, the, the haul was good. The day was good. Cruising around, and I'm, I've already shown you some footage of me cruising around. But uh, I'll put some more at the end because I just love it up in the mountains there. Especially during a weekday when there are no tourists who don't know how to drive. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment and give me a thumbs up. You can also support the channel financially and support me buying $30 worth of Blu-rays from thrift stores by going to patreon.com slash paleocinema. As I said, next time we've got some monster movies and they're going to be a lot of fun getting back into that sort of thing and it will give me a lot of enjoyment as the seasons turn. Anyway, look after yourselves, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, pick up some junky movies from second-hand stores and enjoy yourselves and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>